Welcome back, my little devils. I hope you're enjoying the movie. And now we've got an extra special treat for you. We thought you might want to get an up-close look at some of the creatures in the movie, like the Gorgon. So please welcome to the show, alien animal wrangler, Fernando Wombat. Hello, 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 Dementia. Fernando Wombat here at your service. Fantastic. So what do you have for the kids today? Well, what I got for you today is a beautiful, perfect specimen of a Gorgon. No, wait, up, up. Don't get too close, all right? Because Gorgons are deadly, vicious creatures. They're deadly. Now, normally they travel in huge herds, right? Like thousands of miles across. They cover a whole planet. Because what happens is, is that these space dudes, right? They use plants to breed these little beasties. I mean, they eat anything on a planet. So, I mean, if you see a Gorgon on your planet, you know, I mean, it's the end of the world, isn't it? It's game over. I mean, but I was able to get this one Gorgon, but just one. But, you know, one Gorgon is deadly enough. All right, well, let's take a look at it. Can we get a camera in here, Fritz? Yeah, that's a lobster. Right, right. It does look a bit it's like a, a lobster. lobster, right? Well, it's not, is it? I mean, a lobster is a terrestrial creature. You kids at home, that means of Earth. Well, I mean, this is obviously from outer space or extraterrestrial. Because, I mean, it's a gorgon. It's a deadly killer gorgon. Fantastic. So, how did you acquire this deadly outer space creature? Well, I mean, you know, that's what I do, isn't it? I mean, that's my job. Look, I, I don't mean any offense, Mr. Wombat. Please, please, dementia, call me Fernando. <laughs> okay, Fernando. I just don't believe anything that you're saying. What you mean? I find it hard to believe that a crackpot like you at... And what are you anyway, British, Australian? Correct. What? Whatever. I find it hard to believe that a crackpot like you could possibly require... Maybe you have resources I'm not aware of. Maybe you have a fortress or some kind of animal reserve with millions of employees, or some place that you base your business out of. Well, actually, Dementia, I run my business out of a one-room shed on the uh, south side of Assyria. Yeah, see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I have a little bit of trouble believing that a crackpot who runs his business out of a one-room shed on the south side of Assyria could possibly have acquired this very deadly, very rare outer space creature. Oh, right, right, all right. It's a lobster. It's not a gorgon. It's a lobster. But what I will say is this. It looks just like a gorgon, all right? And if you bring that little uh, space girly out yet on the show earlier and you let her look at it, you know what she'd say? Crikey! That's the most perfect specimen of a gorgon I've ever seen. It's plastic! Right, right, it's plastic, all right? It's not a gorgon, it's not a lobster, it's a plastic replica of a lobster. But I stand by what I said. You bring that little space girly out here and you let her look at it. Don't let her touch it, mind you. <laughs> but, you know, let her look at it from a distance and maybe we lower the lights a little bit. You know what she'd say? Crikey! That thing I see, you know, all the way across the room through the dim lighting, looks like it might be a gorgon. Because you know what, Dementia? It looks just like a gorgon, right? I mean, so from an educational, presentational, like, only point of view, it's a gorgon. Now, granted, from a realistic, realism point of view, then no, it's a plastic replica of a lobster. But I happen to think that both of those points of view are valid and call me crazy, call me bonkers, but I happen to think that education is more important than realism. Yeah, okay. Why don't we get back to the movie? We're not paying you for this, are we? Yes, you are, and it's not refundable. Hey, kids, welcome back. Hope you're enjoying the movie. Joining us now is our friend from the world of the Unknown Science Show, Professor Mindwarp. How are you doing tonight, Professor? I'm functioning within normal parameters. <laughs> yeah, all right, whatever. Now, the professor is here tonight to help us wrap our heads around the future technology in tonight's film. Now, Saturna was also supposed to be here to help us, as she obviously knows this technology better than anyone else, but she hasn't shown up yet. Well, you know, kids will be kids. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, when we booked her, she made this big deal out of you making sure she got paid the adult rate and not the child rate, because she's a teenager now. But you know what? If you want to get treated like an adult, you got to act like one. You know what I'm saying? We get paid for this? I I'll tell you what it is. It's this Britney chick. They've been hanging out nonstop since the first segment. All right? She's a bad influence. I barely recognize that turn anymore. Oh, my Shazbot. He said that? What did you say? <laughs> no, you didn't. Really? You told him I thought he was cute? <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe it. Saturna. Like, hang on. 
Look, I gotta go, but I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye! You're late. Yeah, by like two minutes, chill. No, I will not chill. You promised Professor Meinworth you'd be here on time for this segment, and you weren't. How do you think that makes him feel? Well, actually, Shut up. I... Uh, just relax. I'm here now, aren't I? That's not the point, and you know it. I'm very disturbed by this lack of responsibility you've been showing lately. Uh, I don't have to take this. Yes, you do. You're a guest on my show, and while you're under my studio's roof, you're gonna follow my rules, Johnny, young lady. I am not a kid anymore. I am 615 and one half Parvex old. Stop treating me like I'm 412. I will when you start acting like it. Now sit down and show us how this ray gun works. Explain to yourself. Ugh. All right, well, you better be back by the next segment. Damn it. Kids these days. So, does this mean we're done then? I... What? Oh, no, you know what? You came all this way. Why don't you show me and the kids at home how this uh, ray gun works? Well, Satoru was supposed to help me and... Look, you're a scientist, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so throw some science at it and make it work. Okay, well, take a look here. Um... Ooh! It appears to be powered by an atomic pile that gives off 2.2 Shatner Hertz. Hmm, that would lead me to believe that... Idiot. Fritz, you better call Dr. West. All right, kids, well, let's just get back to the booby. I'm Chip Chipperson and welcome to the Channel 666 Hell Shopping Network. We've got some great deals for you tonight. You might even say that some of them are out of this world, right Bob? <laughs> you might indeed, Chip, because tonight we're exploring a world of science fiction. Ooh! Oh, 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 oh hey, hey, do that again. <laughs> Ooh! Oh, I, oh, scary stuff. I tell you <laughs> what, folks, I'm uh, a little worried that Bob here might be an alien. <laughs> Well, you know what you'd need if I was one, don't you, Chip? What's that, Bob? Oh, well, you'd need one of these handy ray guns. That's a beautiful thing. And you know what? You folks at home may recognize that, as it's been in many classic science fiction films, like Teenagers from Outer Space. Oh, it is a piece of film history, isn't it? Is, it? it is. It really is. And it's a piece of film history that you can own for your very own. Well, you know, I know I'd like to have one. How much is a ray gun of that quality? Go on, Chip, take a guess. All right, all right, I'll say $500. Nope. Really? Okay, uh, $400. Nope. Really, it's under $400. $300? Try again. Wow, it's under $300. Well, there's no way it's below $200. It's below $200. It's below, I can't believe that. Well, then there's absolutely no way it's below $100. You missed it by a parsec, Chip. It's only $99.99. I am literally blown away by that fantastic deal. I tell you what, mm -hmm. folks, you better call in right now. We only have 500,000 of these in stock. Mm -hmm. And it's not the only thing we have on sale tonight from movie history, is it? No, no, it's not. Now, we're all familiar with the film Rocket Men to the Moon, right? Oh, of course. And Commander Cody and his mm -hmm. jetpack rocket pack. But what we have here tonight is his assistant, Private Pecker's Ooh. rocket pack. That's right. Now, Ooh. most of you haven't seen Private Pecker, as the majority of his scenes have been cut from the various VHS and DVD releases. Mm -hmm. But we happen to have a special scene for you right here. Wow, that's amazing. It is, isn't it? And now you folks at home can own this piece of the past of Hollywood movie magic for just $9,999.99. Is it legal to sell that for less than $10,000? Well, I tell you what, it is a steal, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, the operators are standing by, so call in now. And we'll be back next week with some more fabulous deals. Until then. Live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> oh.